to qualifying for a FIFA World Cup final. Standing in their way, though, the mighty Uruguay, twice previous winners. Well, here's the Jordan starting 11, of course. Wayne Boyce here to take you through it. Jim Beglin is alongside me. Jim, you, you saw Jordan against Uzbekistan, but they've shaken it up a bit with this team. Well, they have. I mean, you know, the goalkeeper has changed, and certainly three of the back four have changed also. Now, that could cause them problems, because if anything, um, Jordan must get a decent result, at least a draw, to be able to take to South America for the second leg. And then changing three of the back four, well, that could jeopardise that. Sometimes it's often said, of course, that it is an advantage to play the second leg at home. But I think given the golf and quality between these two sides on this occasion, it's almost better for Jordan, isn't it, to have a shot at Uruguay here at home, first leg, while they are level. I honestly hope so. I mean, it's a, it's a huge occasion for them. They know these Jordanian players that history beckons, and, and they can't let this slip tonight. They've got to really avail of it. Well, there's the Uruguayan starting 11, Edison Cavani, 21, and of course, Luis Suarez, number nine. They're the headline makers in this Uruguayan team. Luis Suarez needs one more goal to be the out and out top goal scorer in the World Cup qualifying from all the different confederations. Edison Cavani, 19 goals in 58 international matches as well. It is an awesome looking strike force, so awesome really, Jim, that it is a surprise that Uruguay even find themselves in this situation. Well, absolutely. I think the reason they find themselves in this intercontinental playoff is because of their away form in the South American qualifiers. They just weren't good enough on the road and eventually needed a couple of victories uh, away from home to, to sort things out. But overall, only seven points on their travels. That's why they're here. And ultimately, they still only missed out on goal difference behind Ecuador to an automatic place. So it's Jordan versus Uruguay, the first leg at the Amman International Stadium of the Intercontinental qualifying playoff between the AFC and Comnibal. Jordan got here, of course, by coming through two separate group stages and then that dramatic penalty shootout victory against Uzbekistan, for which this man, Hossam Hassan, took the reins of the Jordanian team. You're actually in quite good form. They are six unbeaten under Hossam Hassan, the former Egyptian striking legend, and they're ten unbeaten altogether, Jordan. So the form is good, but it's fair to say they haven't been up against the quality that they face here in Oscar Tabarez's Uruguay. The reigning South American champions, remember, they won the Copa America in 2011 to claim that trophy for a record 15th time. They have, of course, twice before been world champion champions, That the last of them back in 1950 when the World Cup was held in Brazil. Now they would love to get back there and reproduce those fireworks, of course. Semi-finalists from 2010 as well in South Africa. There is Sven Odvar Moen of Norway, who is the referee for this one. There's over 50 places between these two sides in the FIFA rankings. The Jordanians rank 70th overall. They are massive outsiders. Can't put too fine a point on that. And the Intercontinental playoff hasn't been too kind to the Asian teams in recent times. Bahrain have lost the last two to Trinidad and Tobago and New Zealand. But I think it's fair to say they were considered to have a fighting chance in those ones for Jordan. Well, on paper, they're here to make up the numbers, but this make no bones about it, in this hostile atmosphere, is not going to be as straightforward as perhaps it looks for Uruguay. Free kick for Jordan, in the all-red. Golf, of course, in the FIFA rankings places, and in terms of history as well and football heritage, almost as, as big a golf. And it's Zaran for Jordan. Good turn by Baniatea. Uruguay take it away, though, through Caceres. Now Almagen. Zaran with the touch back. As FIFA president Seth Blatterjim was talking this week about the need to get rid of these playoffs, but they do produce a wonderful atmosphere and top draw excitement. Yeah, well. You know, I think a, a straightforward qualification would be just a little more boring all round. I think playoffs always generate generate huge excitement. And uh, okay, Uruguay might not want to be in it, but certainly for the smaller um, footballing country, I suppose in, in Jordan, 
and it's, it's a huge feat for them to even get here and, and two games away from a World Cup final. A World Cup final is very, very tough on, on countries like that if, um, if Blatter does get his way. Yeah, it's fair to say that this is Jordan's World Cup final. Uruguay, of course, will be coming here hoping to wrap it up by the time the second leg comes around next week in Montevideo. There's two intercontinental playoffs. Mexico, New Zealand is the other one. Again, the Mexicans will be big favourites in that one, although, like Uruguay, have been struggling in their qualifying campaign. Free kick for the South Americans. Suarez is over it. Forward in light blue for Uruguay. They're making a break for it. It was played in by Suarez, but a strong header away by Nassar. One, two, and lost one of their three previous qualification playoffs, Uruguay. This is the fourth time in a row they've had to take the long route. And Suarez and to take on Nassar. Now with Almajan. This is Al Jaifi. Al Saifi, the target again. They're getting the footing cleared by Nassar. Listen to the roar when Jordan are in possession. This is Hassan Adnat who goes for goal. And a low save for Martin Silva, but early signs are that Jordan are going to be positive. Well, Adnan is a very lively character. Um, small, nippy, difficult for, for defenders, big defenders. They see him as a pest. And, and I think that can only give encouragement to Jordan. You know, I wondered whether we'd see a tentative style where they struggle with the pressure, but um, that was very confident. Suarez so trying to break through. That's our with the clearance. Another free kick for Uruguay. With the quality that they have in the South American side, they won't want to be giving too many free kicks away in an around 30, 40 yard mark. Well, listen, it's gone through legs as well, but you're always going to kind of fancy Martin Silva to, to get behind that. Uh, had he let that in, it would have been a big shot. They know Jordan as well as very stout and alert defence, which they're going to need up against this guy, Suarez, and indeed Edinson Cavani. Um, they have to carry a threat. They have to find a way of, of troubling that Uruguayan defence pretty regularly. Been in fantastic form this season, Suarez, with eight goals and six appearances in the Premier League. One of his best deliveries, though. And gets it away. Yeah, that's two he's taken now, Lou Suarez, where he could get a little more depth, just a middle, little bit more length on them, and um, it would give his teammates a, a much greater chance. Sarah's with a throw in towards Suarez. Picked on first time for Rodriguez. Got him behind and did well, and it's fired over the top by Luis Suarez. And that was a great chance for Uruguay. Yeah, and the problem for Luis Suarez as well on a firm surface is that it's just bouncing as he gets there. And it, I, I mean, I know it looks like a bad miss, but it's very hard to keep those down. And Rodriguez did extremely well to pull that back. Do you know what? I think he could have even maybe tried to trap that. I don't think he realised he had so much time, Luis Suarez. He could have maybe just tried to get it under control and then pick a spot. Not too dissimilar to the one he missed against Fulham at the weekend for Liverpool, although he was a, a bit closer in, but it came at him as well in a similarly quick fashion. But in terms of quietening uh, this atmosphere in a man, I mean, that would have certainly done the trick. But um, what a start that would have been for Uruguay as well. Be absolutely loving this opportunity, the Jordanian players. If they don't make the World Cup finals, the experience of playing against such high profile players as there are in the Uruguayan ranks is Stuani. Dwelt on it for too long though. Majam was onto him almost immediately, and then Aravalo came across and made the challenge. Throw for Jordan. It's absolutely buzzing this stadium when they defeated Australia and Japan here. Love their football, the Jordanians. And the national team is getting gradually better. 
twice quarter finalist, remember, in the, the Asian Cup. On course to qualify for those finals again in 2015. It's Hay out. Saifi with the cross in. They're away by Caceres, and now this is Luis Suarez. Cavani chasing after him. Cavani is up there, and Suarez played it in behind, and it was easy meet in the end for Katab. Well, that was a strange one. I don't know what he was expecting from his strike partner, but Cavani looked as if he was never going to make the run. Suarez was uh, was trying to play in there. He was he was going to the far post all the way. That's too high for Adnan. meeting between these two nations at senior international level the only previous meeting was in the under 20 world cup in 2007 and it is relevant because Cavani and Suarez are in the Uruguayan team that day here is Suarez clipped into the center the header away again and now Adnet yeah, just a little tug by Adnan on Christian Rodriguez but Suarez already looks as if he's going to cause this Jordanian back four a lot of problems with his movement and his, his brightness. He's got in. Aravalo to Lugano. And Pereira. What a player he was, by the way. Sam Hassan, 47 now, took over from the Iraqi Adnan Hamad when his contract expired just before the Uzbekistan playoffs. 68 goals in 176 appearances for Egypt. Hassan, the highest scoring international in Egyptian history, the second most capped player as well. Here is Rodriguez. Aravalo, back by Almajan. Not a good tackle from Al Saifi he's lunged in and I'm not surprised to see that the referee dish out a yellow card for that it's they just need to settle themselves down a little bit obviously there's, there's a great appetite and wonderful enthusiasm but they need to refrain from that type of challenge with very little contact if any was made but it just looks reckless and referees are always likely to, to come down hard on it Fresh yellow card then of the playoff for Al Saifi set-piece opportunity for Uruguay. Third one from a, a decent range inside the opening ten minutes. It's more central this time, though. Again, Suarez is over it. Chipped in by Suarez towards Cavani, punched away by Mohamed. Now Aravalo. Yeah, it was almost so cleverly executed, it really was, because everybody thought he was shaping to shoot, and he's just dinked one in for the run of Cavani. And Cavani gives him an extra dimension as well with his, with his aerial prowess. He's very, very good upstairs too. Sarris' throw. Cavani and Suarez were both given special dispensation by the Uruguayan FA to play for their clubs at the weekends. Maiden wins for Liverpool and Paris Saint-Germain. Flew out a few days after the rest of the Uruguayan squads. I bet their coach, Oscar Tabaras, was praying at the weekend that it would all work out. Here's Hayao. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't he have got some stick if they, oh. they'd have picked up an injury? Man bastard, yeah. Here's Suarez. Oh, it's a strong challenge on Luis Suarez, who hurdled out of the way. Katab make sure he was taking no prisoners there. But this exuberance can easily spill over into, well, in the referee's eyes, into, into something a little more careless. And they've, they've got to just rein it in a little bit, Jordan. It's Pereira. It's carelessly given away, though, to Almajan in the centre. The chase on here for Bani Ataya. Well timed by Lugano, read it well. Spani Atai is pretty quick, he's a pacey customer. So 
much experience, though, of course, Diego Lagarnet. 33 now, winning his 90th cap. Not been getting much football this season at West Brom. He's played just two minutes so far in the 2 1 win at Manchester United and a, a couple of League Cup appearances. Godin. And the entire getting stuck into him and coming up with the ball is Zara. It's blocked away. It's a throw for Jordan. Not by Lodero. Hay out. Yeah, he was hoping for a corner, but got a throw in. And throw for Jordan. Oh, made a, a raw mess of that. Well, that's a couple of throws we've seen from Zahran that looked to me as if uh, they were fell throws. Just seems to be releasing the ball a little ahead of his head. They don't seem to pick that up much these days, do they? It's, it's something that's let go quite a lot. Do you know what? I mean, I remember doing it once upon a time in my early career and I got absolutely ripped for it. You know, a professional footballer and an international footballer at that, um, executing a foul throw, you know, not the done thing. It's not the arrow. It's Pereira. It's hard enough to live down on a, a Sunday football team, let alone at that level. <laughs> Cavani. Beaten to that, Rodriguez is after it. Rodriguez to take on Adnan. Adnan putting the work in, though, and that's what's required from Jordan. I think he'll need to as well, Wayne, down that side, because Zahran, the right back for Jordan, when I've seen him in the, uh, the Asian playoff, looks a bit suspect positionally at times, and he can't be trusted, so he's going to need a little bit of help around him, and Adnan provided it then. I really have been the... Success story in the Asian qualifying tournament, Jordan. It's fair to say they, they were outsiders against Uzbekistan in the playoff, but a much closer run thing than this. They are massive outsiders here against the former world champions. Semi finalists, remember, only three and a half years ago. It's got ink to Caceres. Switch by Godin. Nassar. Yeah, I just noticed Stuani saying to the referee there that the suggestion was there was a little elbow on his part, but he's claiming that wasn't the case. Atama Kell had gone down rather too easily. I'll pick them for Uruguay. Ended up in the end, five points clear of Venezuela, the side in sixth place, that one against Argentina, sailing qualification. Suarez, nice ball by Suarez, here's a chance for Uruguay. Stuani almost wriggling through. And Jordan just managing to close the gates. And now they have a free kick, a foul on Hayal. Yeah, and the referee just laying down the law because Hayal wanted Lugano yellow carded there. And you can see the, the skipper for Uruguay saying, no way. It was just a little tug, he was pulled back. Many of this Jordanian squad who are in their 30s. Probably the last opportunity to qualify for a, a World Cup. Same too for a number of this Uruguayan team who have been together a while now. Here in this latest successful stint that they've enjoyed. Darren's throw. That's Copper America win in 2011 for 15 years. and in Argentina as well, they would have enjoyed that, that's for certain, against their fiercest rivals. Caceres clears. Katab hooking it forwards. Caceres' header. 
Elmajen. Zaran. Katab. Zaran. Caceres has been penalised for that challenge on Adnan. It's another free kick for Jordan. Saifi. Almajan. Spectacular effort from there. And it's been deflected behind. Well, he scored a, a cracking goal in the second leg of the Asian playoff in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent. Um, and I'm not surprised because he, he likes a little punt from, from distance at times as well. He likes to spray the ball about in midfield. And, and now they've just begun to kind of get this crowd going a little bit because they, they've begun to play a little bit of football after all the kind of um, the energy that they were using at the start. They seem to be just settling down a little bit now, Jordan. Adnan to deliver. He's gone short, though. He's crossed into the centre. It's a header away by Stuani, who was back there. Good run by Al Saifi. It's another corner. Positive spell this for the home side. It is, good little spell of pressure, but that looked like a cross from Al Saifi. He did well to actually get on the end of it and get past Cavani. And um, Martin Silva just had to be lively on his front post then, but he's trying to pull this back, but it, that could have crept in. It wouldn't be the first time, would it, that a cross has ended up in the back of the net in a big game. And the crowd continues to get louder and louder. Nassar then, with the corner for Jordan. Again, forced into the corner now by Aravala. Caceres clears. Quite the old character, isn't he? Oscar Tavares. 66 years of age, a former defender himself who played for clubs in Uruguay and Mexico. His second spell in charge of the, the national team. He took the side to Italia 90. There's a fair old gap between the two stints. Here's Al Bashir. Well battled by Godin. It's a dive from Hayel. He's just trying to get a cheap one from the referee because he knew the ball was gone. He had too many Uruguayans around him, and I'm not surprised to see him pick himself up. Uh, have to get on with it. Is a free kick now. Oh, now Majet. It's Zaran. I suppose to get any joy here at all, Jordan need every player playing at 100% and above if possible, don't they? Agreed. Well, that's given away though to Cavani. Almost won it back. Katab across. It was careless from the skipper, Hatta Mikel. You know, it was an easy pass on, and yet not to straight into a Uruguayan player, your right wing. And Jordan have to be um, on, on the very top of their game. Every single player, they can't afford to carry anybody tonight, not even one. And and even at that, they might need some sort of a Uruguayan implosion along the way. But listen, I, I suppose after what they managed in the Asian playoff, over two legs, if they can keep it tight and even force it to penalties in Montevideo. You never know. They certainly don't. Greater gaps than this have certainly been bridged. Jordan have shown steady improvement. This is their greatest qualifying campaign ever. Can they achieve the ultimate prize? Or will Uruguay ultimately prove to be too strong? Put away by Godin. But I think Oscar Tabares will be hoping that they can nick a lead here, Uruguay, because Good defence, good stout defence on, on the part of the visitors um, here in Amman. And he's, he's, he's got to fancy that Cavani or Suarez at some stage will have a decent opportunity. I mean, Suarez has already had one, it was difficult, but, um, but scorable. And you would think that they'll carve out three or four over the course of this 90 minutes. 
Stuani. Wiggling his way through. Stuani, it's a lovely ball to Cavani. It's beaten away, but it's been turned into the back of the net by Pereira. And Uruguay have the away goal. Well, with all the firepower they have up front, it is the fullback who has opened the scoring here, Maxi Pereira of Benfica. And those travelling Celeste supporters delighted, and well they might be, that is a big breakthrough. Well, it's incredible as well on, on the part of Maxi Pereira, just to keep going, and, and not just to watch that come in, just to keep making the run into the box. Um, and said that to you earlier on, Wayne, that Cavani and his, his aerial presence is always a big help, and you can just see in it. I think the keeper does well. He probably could have got maybe a little bit more on it, and it's fallen beautifully, and you've got two static Jordan defenders not reacting quickly enough. Look who's on the move, Maxi Pereira, and bang, Uruguay are in front. Yeah, he's nipped in between the two of them, fell asleep for a fraction of a second, and Pereira has punished them with his third international goal for Uruguay. What a time to get it. His second of this qualifying campaign, he scored in the 4-2 win against Peru. You know, a lot of that is probably influenced by his, uh, his club manager, George Jesus at Benfica, because they're a very aggressive attacking side, particularly at home, Benfica, and he'll be um, he'll be very used to, to being encouraged to do that sort of thing. If you're going to make a run forward, go all the way, and he did. Danny Atea. It's not the stuffing out of Jordan, hasn't it? Well, just listen to... The, King Abdullah Stadium now, the international stadium here, it's very quiet. Here's Suarez. Cavani up in support. Cavani again, Suarez once more. Just touching it off for Ladero. Last thing Jordan need is Luis Suarez and Edison Cavani starting to buzz. The atmosphere has changed instantly. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It is literally like somebody's pulled the plug here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the biggest party spoiler I've heard in a while. Um, because there was, like, massive excitement here before and as to what could be achieved. And I think all the way through their campaign as well, Jordan, even in adversity, have, have managed to kind of find a belief and a spirit to keep plugging away, and never more so than... Um, in Uzbekistan when they got back into the game and, and then saw it all the way through to penalties and, and came through that. So there is character in these lads and they're going to need to find it now in, in abundance. Well, of course, if they found any sort of a way form at all, they may well have qualified automatically, Jordan, bearing in mind they beat both Australia and Japan here, but they lost all four away games, which proved costly, as did a 1-1 home draw here with Iraq. The, the away defeats in Australia and Japan, they were, were beaten 4-0 and 6-0 by those two. Yeah, Hyels just looked for another cheap decision from the referee, which he didn't get quite rightly. And uh, he and Lugano now are having words. Lugano saying, you, you know, you're trying to get me in trouble, you're going down way too easily. So um, Hyels got to be careful because uh, the referee's on to him and he, he could easily yell a card him. But he doesn't look it, but he's got to be one seriously happy man now on that Uruguayan bench, Oscar Tavares. Yeah, he doesn't give much away, does he, Tavares? It's Caceres with the throw to Bodiero. He's an experienced referee, of course, Sven Odvar Moen of, of Norway. He's a regular in the Champions League. He refereed the 2011 Under-17 World Cup final. So he will certainly have Ahmad Ayel's number. And the last thing Jordan will, of course, need is reduce numbers through stupidity. Yeah, well, I, I was a little concerned for them in the early part of the game. You kind of, you knew that Hassan Hassan would, would encourage them to get in faces and get very, very tight and, and be very industrious, and, and they certainly were that. I was just a bit worried at times it might just kind of overdo it a little bit in tackles, and uh, I think... The, the early yellow card, I think, kind of helped settle things down. There's the goal scorer, Pereira. Aravalo to Lodiero. Caceres. Now Rodriguez. Suarez beaten to it by Katab. It's Pereira. Is any surprise to see Uruguay ahead on the possession front? That was always likely to be the case. 
Suarez. Pereira. Speaks again for Pereira. Here's Suarez. Lifted in towards Cavani. Katab with the header away. Caceres. Rodriguez, and that was a bit of a waste. I mean, they'll say it quietly, Jim, but in the back of their mind, Uruguay are looking to finish this today, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. I think they know. I mean, they, they've made a great start towards that now with, with getting the first first goal. Um, and if they can add to it, I think they'd be more than happy. I think if they could go away with a two-goal lead here, they would feel that the job is pretty much done. It would take something special for Jordan um, in one of a day or two uh, to recover. And, you know, we, we spoke about it earlier on, Wayne, about Uruguay's away form in qualifying in South America has probably led them to this position because it hasn't been strong enough at home, unbeaten, and, um, and very, very difficult to take on in, in, in Montevideo. It's very similar stories, isn't it, from, from both teams? Yeah. The away form for Jordan as well has proved costly. Just two away wins for Uruguay. His game in Peru, and then, crucially, in Venezuela. It was that 1-0 win in Venezuela that really set them up to at least finish in the top five. There is El Saifi. Ran into Aravalo. Pereira after this. El Saifi across, though, to make the challenge. Throw for Uruguay. Odiero to Suarez from Almajan. Still going, Luis Suarez. Good run by Luis Suarez. He's still going. Oh, they're appealing for the penalty. It was right in front of the referee, though, in fairness. He was seeing again, though. Here's Cavani. He was right in his stride then, Luis Suarez. Do you know, nobody else appealed. No. That's, that's the only thing I wonder, is he at it again? Because he did it against Argentina, or at least the Argentinians say so, uh, at the end of the qualifying phase in, in, um, in South America. Certainly cut down on it in the Premier League, but perhaps old habits die hard in the light blue of Uruguay. And Suarez has been penalised there. Yeah, just lent into the defender to allow the ball to, to carry on on his journey. It's terrific to watch, isn't he? A street footballer describes him to a tee, doesn't it? It does. Well, this is it here. I mean, to be honest with you, he saw the tackle coming and just decided to fall. And I think he knew the ball was a little gone. And I think the referee, the referee couldn't have been closer. No. He was practically on top of it. And I think he's got that right. That was one where he was he was looking for it too easily again. But not not a wise thing for Jordanian defenders to be doing. You don't start throwing a leg out when you got when this guy is in or around your box. I think that's a final warning now for Ahmad Hayao. He's, he's getting on the referee's nerves a bit, isn't he? for throwing himself around, and that challenge hasn't helped his cause. There's the challenge again. He's, he, he's he, gone over the leg, hasn't he? he? That's he, what's happened. He dropped to yeah. meet the leg, yeah. basically. That's, that's exactly what he's done. And, and I think the referee's called it right. Free kick for Jordan. I mean, to be honest, that's the kind of invitation that Luis Suarez... <laughs> probably couldn't believe <laughs> you're asking for it so I, I, th I think he knew as well as his, his last touch it just was a little too strong and the ball was was away from him so he thought well why not and Zaran as you say there was there was no really strong appeals from Uruguay Jordan needs something to get this crowd going again well, the only thing I'll say to you, Wayne, is, uh, you know, what have they done in terms of troubling Martin Silva in the Uruguayan goal? We, we saw that shot early on from Adnan, and, and that's been it. Zaran. Almayet. Al Saifi. Taking on Pereira. Aravalo covering, but Al Saifi is still going. There's two in the penalty area for Jordan. Well played by Al Saifi. Well defended by Lugano. He looks about as lively as anyone else. I mean, the other thing, I suppose, he had the cross that Martin Silva had to react to on, on the front post as well. 
That's a corner for Jordan. They just need something like this to go their way, don't they? A set piece or a fortunate yeah. deflection, and it's game on again. Yeah, they need a break from 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 even this corner now, and it it, it could be huge for their um, for their confidence and, and their morale. That now with the corner. Poor delivery, and it's easily cleared by Aravalo. Magen. Mikel. Not curing anything now. The Uruguayan player falling to the ground. Is Adnan. Well, it's got the crowd going again anyway. Al Majan. They're recovering. Slowly but they surely are. they're recovering. Lofted in first time. And got in, stood his ground. Yeah, and it was Adnan this time, not Hayel, who's been going to ground a little softly. Before the ball's even arrived, he's, he looked as if he's going down. That's just clearly a case of Godin is just getting tight to him, and he feels the contact and thinks, well, I'll use it to see if the referee will uh, will be nice to me. But 74th cap tonight, Godin, he's been an international since he was 19. It's an ambitious attempt, if it was that. It was either an overhit through ball or a poor effort at goal. It was an overhit through ball, um, and it's he's 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 kind of he's he's brought a strength to, to what they're doing. He's the only guy for me who's running at people, at Al Saifi, and um, yeah, that was just overhit, just a little overexcited in that. But um, but he looks probably more than anyone else in the Jordanian lineup. He looks more capable of, of causing a bit of trouble to that visiting defence. Caceres. Cavani, now Rodriguez, there's a throw for Uruguay, Christian Rodriguez is yet to start a league game for Atletico Madrid this season, it's used mainly on the substitutes bench. Ravallo. Suarez taking it away though, and here's Zaran. Ballo is penalised, free kick for Jordan. Zaran, Adnan, covered by Godin. It's the half time. Uruguay in front. An unlikely source, Maxi Pereira, following in Cavani's header that was saved by Shatnawi Mohamed. Caceres. Yeah, the problem, I think, with Jordan, they're not keeping the ball for, for long enough. You know, if they put even five or six passes together. It'll give him a chance of getting around the Uruguay box. But um, we saw a little spell in the middle of the half, this half, where they did OK for a while and they got the crowd going, but they've not been able to maintain it unless they actually all show a little bit more courage and getting on the ball and making that happen. I think they're going to find it very, very hard to, uh, to get at the visitors. Now Majan with the free kick for Jordan. Aravalo with the header away. Everything seems to be falling to Aravalo, as did that one. Taken away by Lugano. Now Almagen. And he's going for goal, and it was a poor effort. Yeah, that's a couple of those now we've seen from him. And, and again, he's probably got that memory of Tashkent in his mind, thinking, well, I smashed one in that particular evening, I can do it again. Well worked initially. Um, but 
it's probably going to frustrate his teammates that he's that he's trying from that distance. You know, it is very speculative. This is a nation, remember, who's only twice qualified for the Asian Cup, which is the, the continental equivalent of the, the Euros in Asia. And yet they, here they are, trying to qualify for the World Cup for the first time. There are steady steps being made in Jordan. They are improving, slowly but surely. This was always looking like a, a tough call to win this playoff, whoever they were drawn against. It was always going to be one of the South American sides, and all of those teams are pretty decent on their day. It really is a, a strong section. Cleared by Godin. And they're putting for handball against Katab. from Hayao. And Yataya forces Al Saifi wide. It's a corner if it goes. Aravalo is back there though. He's everywhere at the moment, Aravalo. He does a good little job. But again, I think no surprise that you know experience is always called for in situations like this. And you know he he, he knows his role inside out in front of those centre backs and you know filling in for full backs now and again Aravalo does it extremely well. He's on loan in the MLS at the moment with Chicago Fire from Palermo. 51st cap tonight. Chicago failed to reach the playoffs, so no doubt he'll be returning to Palermo shortly. Taken short by Almajan. It's Katab. Now Adnan. Saran. That man went on the outside, but Godin happy to leave that for Martin Silva. It's only his third cap, Martin Silva. He's in because the regular first choice, Fernando Muslera, is out with a fractured toe. He has travelled here with the squad, but was never going to play. Down again, high out. Yeah, that's one of those again. The touch is too strong. He knows it's going out for a for a throw in. And Diego Lucano, <laughs> I think he's getting more and more wound up by him because Hayel just keeps going to ground. It's Pereira. Now Suarez. Of course, the risk you take with that of your high out. If he, if he does get caught in the penalty area, then and the referee's not sure. He's, he's going to go with Uruguay, isn't he? Probably. Here's Katap. Zaran. Now Adnan. Zaran again back to Shatnawi. He had to feel a bit sorry for with the, the opening goal. He did well to get Cavani's header away, but really wasn't backed up by his defenders who were sleeping. They were. I, I just wonder with Shatnawi as well, could he have gotten just a little bit more on it? Because it's not as if it surprised him. I can understand if he's just beating it away because it's so close to him or he's been surprised. But it looked as if he just had enough time to be able to get a bit more purchase on, on, uh, on what he tried to do. Caceres. Zaran's header. That now is Rodriguez. Cavani. He touched uh, Lodiero. Pereira. Tired, taking it away comfortably. Made off by Hayao, goes for the return. Godin is going across, but he just couldn't keep it in. Hayao, just too much pace on it. Pity, and, and he looks a real kind of, he cuts a frustrated figure now, Hayao, because it's, it's, he's not getting the service, it's not happening. But at least a little more encouraging again. I like to see that, a little combination play and, and quick ball, one and two touch. The second goal in the 2-1 win here against Japan, Hayout. Certainly his day so far in the national jersey to remember. 
grab something here, it would surpass it. Final moments then of the first half. Uruguay in front, here's Lodiero. Tipped in behind, oh, it's a great chance for the second, and it's been tucked away by Stuani. It's turning into a bit of a nightmare for Jordan this first leg, and Oscar Tavares' side are almost wrapping up their place in Brazil inside the opening 45 minutes. Too easy again for Stuani just to roll in and score the second goal. It's Jordan nil, Uruguay 2, and talk about an uphill climb now for Hossam and Sands team. Well, it already looks extremely difficult. I love the little dummy from Cavani. They thought he was going ahead and he didn't. That should have been defended by Al Saifi getting back far post. Missed times it and misses it. And Stuani really just had to kind of keep it on target, keep it low, and, and the goalkeeper can do nothing about it. I mean, this time he's completely faultless. And it's just, again, poor defending. And Uruguay have just waited for the chances to come and finished them clinically. Second international goal for... Stuani, his only previous goal came in this qualifying tournament, the 2-0 win against Colombia. Where did Jordan go from here? Just as the home crowd had found their voices again, Uruguay double the lead. Yeah, and still got the poker face, and no surprise to see Hassan Hassan just trying to kind of uh, egg his players on now and, um, and keep their spirits up. Hayao. He's gone down again. Well, I think the referee should have taken action by now. I mean, many times you have to kind of practice simulation before you're going to get punished. It's every and there time you go. He... He's just indicated yeah. now the Norwegian official to say next time you're going to be booked. But how many times has he done it? It must be about four or five. Every time he's lost control of the ball. He's got there. There's Stuani. But Wayne, in, in this first half, I, I can't fault um, Jordanian kind of attitude and their application. They, they, they've shown kind of a, a wonderful willingness to, to run hard and fight in good spirit. But ultimately, you have to have the quality in possession, and, and they've lacked. They've looked very, very limited in that respect. Zakel, dispossessed by Cavani. Good tap getting in the way. Almajan. He's been dispossessed, and this is Suarez. And Suarez has been fouled by Almajan. It's a free kick in just the kind of range he loves. Yeah, Almajan gets the yellow card for that. You know, it's one of those, again, if, if, there's, um, if there's a player ahead of you moving towards goal, you can't these days, you can't do anything. And I mean, that's just asking for trouble. Um, and he's given Uruguay a very good position now, and if they could add a third before half-time, it would be a, a completely demoralised Jordanian dressing room, if not already. Well, referee being a bit pernickety here with where Cavani lines up the ball. Something like Cavani this time. in the jersey of Uruguay. Can he make it 20 here? Suarez has made his way into the penalty area. 20 seconds into a minute to be added on, and that was a poor free kick from Cavani, straight into the wall. Maravello's follow-up. And Stuani cleared away by Katab. Yeah, and I just noticed that wall was being set up. Katab and Lassar were having, having words, um, which is not a good sign either. And that's only going to play into Uruguay's hands more if there is a little upset now in, in Jordanian ranks. I suppose the worry for Jordan is they're 2-0 down, and although he's been involved in both goals, Cavani, he nor Suarez are on the score sheet yet. Here's Pereira's delivery. Headed back by Rodriguez towards Cavani. Taken away, though, by Zaran. That's good work from Cavani. And that is the end of what has been a terrific first half for the visitors. Not so, though, for the home side. The atmosphere really has died a bit of a death. The opening goal from Maxi Pereira after 21 minutes putting Uruguay in front.
And then Christian Stuani adding the second just a, a few moments before the break. It is Jordan Neal, Uruguay 2 at half time. Welcome back to the Amman International Stadium. The second half about to get underway shortly. Uruguay leading Jordan by two goals to nil. Pereira and Stuani with the two goals and Jim Beglin uh, alongside me. Jim, this, this, this is going to be a, a long walk back out to the pitch for the Jordanian players for the second half. Yeah, I think this is their, their worst nightmare. I think they would have feared um, a scenario like this developing um, you know, before the game. Um, the fact that Uruguay haven't exactly taken the game to Jordan and played them off the park. Uruguay have just clever. They've almost allowed it to come for them and wait for the mistakes, and, and Jordan have obliged. I think Jordan knew that individual quality, certainly um, the visitors are, are superior right across the pitch, but, but that they might be able to just do enough by defending stoutly and show enough kind of zest and, and enthusiasm and maybe just eke something out at the other end, but it's, it's proving not to be the case. And um, I think it's almost a damage limitation job for them now because you could see Uruguay comfortably extending their, their advantage for that second leg. Yeah, certainly Jordan's 10-match unbeaten run is in Serious jeopardy here. Their only home loss during these whole World Cup qualifying campaign, which is a fairly prolonged campaign if you are an Asian team, was a 3-1 defeat here to Iraq in the, in the final group stages. They played some terrific football here, buoyed on by this fantastic atmosphere that's produced inside this stadium by the Jordanian supporters. It's pretty tough for them as well. They found their voice eventually, didn't they, after conceding the, the first goal, but the, the second goal from... Stuani really was a, a killer blow for them. Oscar Tavares, Uruguay's vastly experienced 66-year-old coach, must be delighted. Two-time South American Coach of the Year, won the Copa Libertadores back in 1987 with Peñarol. Guided the team, of course, to the Copa America crown in 2011, ending a 15-year run without being the South American champions, just to nudge them one in front of Argentina again and make them the most successful nation on that continent in winning that prize. Well, here's the goals again. The Cavani header. And it's absolutely right what you say, that the more you see that, the worse it gets for Chatnaoui in goal. Yeah, I just think he, he could have gotten something stronger on it. And here, it seems to be read by Al Saifi, and yet he just doesn't make contact on the ball. Had he done so, he could have easily conceded a corner and the danger is gone, but... He's allowed Stuani to slip around the back and, and bang, it's a uh, big trouble for Jordan. So the sides are out for the second half. Uruguay leading Jordan by two goals to nil. Pereira and Stuani's goals. The difference between these two sides, Uruguay just have so much more experience, so much more quality, of course. They have players experienced at all the top-level international competitions. They have players in their squad playing all around the world, at the top European clubs as well as in South America's finest teams. Most of the Jordanian squad still play their football either in Jordan or neighbouring countries in the Middle East. Yeah, and I think also, Wayne, on, on top of that, I think the experience of handling this sort of occasion and, and the, the tension that, that accompanies it. I think Uruguay, um, they've been there before. I think it's the fourth time in a row now, and certainly some of these players would have experienced that four years ago. It's high out. It's done well to get on that ahead of Lugano and Godin. And finally, he gets a decision. Well, he actually slips, and then as he tries to get back up, Diego Godin just kind of lands on him. There's the slip, and then Coutinho almost goes for a piggyback job on him, and uh, this time he did deserve his, his decision. Now, can Jordan make this count? They simply have to score the next goal, or even at this early stage, it is tie over. Jordanians were hoping it was going to be one of those I was there moments. Still might be, but it's going to have to be a sensational second half if it is. It's too much to worry about, Martin Silva. Nassar gets over it. It's short by Nassar. It's driven in by Zaran, the right back. 
Not many bodies in the way, though. Flipped on once more. Pulled away by Stuani. Struggling to clear their lines here, Uruguay. This is Al-Saifi. Now Nassar. It's the crossing again. Now Al-Saifi. Oh, he's hit it into the ground. A disappointing end to some good pressure from Jordan. Yeah, and a Uruguayan injury in the box as well. Knock, knock to the face. Yeah, a little bit more excitement has been generated at the start of the second half, but it hasn't uh, it hasn't ended up with a goal they, they so crave. It's Diego Godin again, the, the man who gave the free kick away, which caused that little um, spell of pressure from Jordan. Struggling a bit here, Godin. From Atletico Madrid, spells with Villarreal and Nacional in Uruguay, that club that produces so much top talent. A poor effort from Al Saif. They're certainly buzzing again since half time. They about found their voices again. Looks as though Godina Godina's back to his feet. Still hobbling a bit though, walking a bit gingerly. Yeah, I mean he seemed to be holding his face, but if anything, it looks as if it's kind of his right thigh from groin area that um, seems affected. Kick for Uruguay. Temporarily down to ten. Stuani to Suarez. Well, the arrow was caught there by Almajan, the referee waving play on, though. And have a guess who's dropped in at centre back, Wayne? Aravala. <laughs> <laughs> He's done every other job, hasn't he, so far? He's been absolutely terrific in that midfield. Here's Zaran. Adnan, Zaran again. And across, but it's touched away by Godin, who's back on now. Cavani. Stuani. Torriero. It's Pereira. Suit Uruguay, on it just knocking the ball around, keeping possession of it. Pereira yeah. under pressure, and the fact that the, the crowd have uh, found their voice again, I think, has to help. Just has to kind of lift spirits once more and just keep the players going. He's found himself a fluorescent vest during the half-time break. Osama San. He's El Saifi. I think it's because his shirt looks like the Uruguayan it does, shirt. doesn't it? Yeah. That's exactly yeah. why I think he's been uh, he's been ordered to uh, to don something. Nassar's throw. He's not too far off the shorts and socks either with his black trousers. <laughs> Pereira's throw. What a great position to be in though, Uruguay. The away leg, 2-0 up stages of this second half. Stuani from Nassar. Let's not forget some of the players available on the Uruguayan bench. Diego Forlan amongst them, Abel Hernandez. On the back foot here now, though, it's a lovely ball in! What a miss from Hayal! Unbelievable! He cannot believe he hasn't scored, and in fact, some spectators are still celebrating because they thought it had gone in. Well, it was Caceres that, you know, came up with a poor touch, and Adnan was brilliant on the right-hand side. The pace to get away from Caceres, a wonderful ball in, and you can see his reaction. He thought, well, all you've got to do is just get decent contact on it, and it's in. And Hayel just misses the front post, and he knew as well, Hayel. His night has just gone from bad to worse. 
Well, that is by far and away the best thing we've seen from Jordan. And what a great chance to get themselves right back into this contest. That might just do Uruguay a big favour, you know. A, a, a little wake-up call like that, it might just kind of just sharpen the senses once more. Ravallo wins the free kick for Uruguay. And Caceres is on the ball now, will be a very, very relieved fullback as well because he put his team in, uh, in trouble then. Now Bashir. Zaran, but cut out by Godin. It's a promising run, but comes to nothing, although it's a free kick, actually. Adnan, turned it a bit heavily on his wrist by the looks of it. It was sort of a surreal atmosphere, wasn't it, after that high out chance? Because there was, there was people celebrating and, and people stunned. Yeah. That's why he's got the decision. Look at Stuani, he's just kind of, I'm yeah. not sure it was deliberate, but he, he landed on Adnan's arm. And um, the referee spotted it. Although it hurts just as much if it's yeah. not deliberate, doesn't it? Zaran player being replaced, so the first change by Hossam Hassan. Taya Bawab is on. Some played in by Akel, but easily cleared away by Uruguay. And Nassar. Akel again. Barrera's header. It's Nassar. Jean. We were talking at half time about what Jordan's attitude might be to this, and they certainly haven't given up the ghost. It's been a, a decent start from them. Well, pride comes into it too. Al Saifi. Offset again, it was a good ball in from Al Saifi. This wouldn't fall kindly though for Hayal. It's certainly not his day, is it? No, well, at least he stayed on his feet this time. But Adnan again, it's a wonderful ball. And listen, when you're ahead of the near post, you've got to just open your body up a little bit more to make sure that you can get that left foot on it and, and find it the far corner. And, um, and, and he did exactly the opposite, just got a poor touch on it. Hi, El. Ravallo. Put in by Al Bashir. I guess the Uruguayans probably addressed it at half time that there's likely to be a charge from the home side and at the start of the second half, and we're seeing that. And Oscar Tabaras, I'm sure, will have forewarned his players about making sure that they stay alert. As I say, that, that chance for Hayel had to be a big kind of reminder of that. Ravallo. And the attire. It's down again for Jordan Pereira. And Stuani. It's lazy, though. Almajan. It's rather casual from Stuani. Now Saifi. Too much on it, though, for Hayel. Almagen. Cavani. What's the Caceres? Suarez, well, he dummied it, thinking there was somebody in behind him, but there wasn't. Al-Bashir. 
from a neutral standpoint, it's a, it's a shame that Hayao didn't hit the target because it would have made things interesting, wouldn't it? It really would have, would have livened things up. I think for the night in general, I think it probably would have been best as a spectacle if Jordan had opened the scoring. In fact, that Uruguay did, I think, put a big dampener on things. But yeah, had, had he um, got one back then, it certainly would have changed the complexion. Suarez. The foul from Adnan. Oh, I love the foul. I mean, Adnan seemed to just pull him down. <laughs> can understand his uh, disbelief of the officials there. There you go, watch this. He grabbed him around the waist and then by the left leg. Right tackle, isn't what, it? What more do you want? Uh, throw, rather, for Uruguay. Suarez wasn't too happy with the, the height of the challenge from Adnet. Can't help himself, Suarez, can he? Once he gets annoyed with the referee. Touched off again. It's Rodriguez. Boab. Dispossessed though by Lodiero. Here's Suarez. Pull back from Rodriguez wasn't the best. It's a foul on Al Bashir and it's a free kick to Jordan. It's going through a bit of a scrappy passage at the moment, the game. Saifi, culpable of course for the, the second Uruguayan goal, and he failed to cut the ball out. Being replaced by Moussab Alaham. Nassar, there is Alaham, the substitute. Moab, the other substitute with the cross in. Casieres did well just to get something in the way. That's great defending by the left back to get in. He made the mistake before, but that was great defending. Moab. Alaham. Oh, he's gone down looking for it, and the yellow card is out. Absolutely no hesitation from the referee, who was right there again. And the substitute has come on and got himself booked for diving within seconds. Yeah, he's got to be careful now because he didn't react too well. And it's it's as outrageous a dive as you'll see. I mean, he's just come straight off the bench, got involved in the first phase, and that's the second thing he's done in the game. And, um, and he's just decided to take off. Leg goes out, and he's just playing for it. I mean, Cavani, Cavani's turned straight round to the referee as if to say, come on, I haven't played him. <laughs> it's laughable when you see it like it that. Is, isn't it? it is. You have to laugh. He actually, I mean, Alaham scored um, against Uzbekistan here, um, and it was a very good goal where he cut inside, and he took it extremely well. And he can bring a bit of flair and a liveliness to things, but um, but not like that. Certainly trumped anything that Hayao produced so far in the match. <laughs> well, it kind of asks the question, though, raises the question, Wayne, as to why hasn't the referee taken similar action with Hayao? Is it just because he's in the box looking for a penalty that he, f he deems it more serious? Well, I, I guess that is the answer, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mind you, I suppose in many ways there's been a degree of poetic justice for Hayao with that miss right at the start of the second half. That would hurt him much more than any yellow card would have done. Here's Bauap. Taken away by Aravalo. Now Rodriguez. Caceres. Well, I feel really that, that Uruguay aren't using the, the full gear set, are they? They're, no, just, they're, they're just waiting they're their chance again. Well, again, we were we were saying that in our chat at half time about the fact that they've played within themselves, and it's not as if they've they've um, done anything special in the opposition's half. But you know, they've they've just waited, bided their time, been patient, and, and Jordan have made little errors, and their quality has um, their individual quality has has shown. Ravallo, cleared away by Nassar. It's driven across, and that's comfortable for Shatnawi. He's only playing because Amar Shafi, the, the usual goalkeeper who was the hero against Uzbekistan in the penalty shootout, is suspended. Really 
big surprise, though, was the exclusion of the, the captain, Ahmed Deeb, from Hossam Hassan. Excluded entirely from the squad, not just the starting 11. Yeah, well, you, well, you wonder whether there was, um, you know, some sort of disagreement between player and manager to, to warrant that. Because Amr Deeb, very important midfielder, extremely experienced, can play kind of deeper in midfield or he can play off the striker. And, uh, and, and that is a strange one. And Adnan, who's now gone to right back, Cavani wants him yellow carded for, for tugging his shirt. Stuani. Don't like to see that, do you, from a player like Cavani? world faces of the game now for his uh, multi-million dollar move of course to Paris Saint-Germain Edison Cavani 64 million euros they paid Napoli for it it's interesting you know he cost Napoli 17 million from Palermo who in turn paid just under five to Danubio so just shows how his values risen here yeah. by Pereira as good as he is I think Suarez is about as hot as anything in the world at the moment here's a chance now for Jordan well off target though from Alahan got a deflection he's got a little block but again that's what he loves to do come inside and it's a, there's a shot Caraval is the one who was in the way yeah, he's been everywhere isn't he not one of the headline makers in the Uruguayan team but which is important the delivery from Alahan, dealt with again by Uruguay. Haven't been troubled at all by any Jordanian set pieces. Now challenging for it, as was Bawab. No, you're absolutely right about that, Luis Suarez. I mean, eight goals in six games since his return, 11 goals in the World Cup qualifying campaign for Uruguay, he's, he's level with Robin Van Persie and uh, I bet you can't guess the other player, Dion McCauley of Belize. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might struggle, that's why I helped you out. No, thanks for that. <laughs> but another goal for Luis Suarez and he would be officially the top scorer in the World Cup qualifiers. He is, as you say, in red-hot form. Lodiero. Speaking of reds, it's, it's going to be a battle for Liverpool to keep him, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I, I would hope that Liverpool could go on to secure Champions League football and that he would want to stay. And final change for Jordan. And the attire is coming off. And Khaled Rakan is the player to come on. Here's Cavani. Bashir. A couple of goes at Cavani, but he came away with the ball. It's Barrera. Now Lodiero. Cavani. Back from Stuani. Cavani again. Determined defending by Akel. And clear by Nassar. Alaha. Bawab. Done quite well actually those two changes for Jordan. Bawab and Alahan. And then it's given away by El Majan. I find that and what I've seen of, of Jordan now the few times I've watched him is that that often lets them down. There's kind of a, a carelessness in, in that final pass and um, just making sure it kind of sticks and, and yeah, they, they don't they don't come up with the goods enough. I think a little improvement in that area as they approach the final third could make a significant difference to, to what they do going forward. Zalma Jan. Bowab. Casares again stepping in. Cavani has it. <laughs> it's nice from Cavani. Well, you can do that when you're 2 0 up away from home. Rodriguez I was lucky to get it back off Almajan. Yeah, you wouldn't want your centre forward doing that too much in that position, would you? 
Here's Pereira. Now Rodriguez. Just meet from Uruguay. Stuani's head down. Oh, they made a right mess up of that at the back, Jordan. And Katab was very fortunate in the end that it didn't cost him. It looked like a climb for uh, Lugano then. He thinks not. And amazingly, Hyel did his best to stay on his feet then. Alaham. That's another example of it, Wayne. You know, it's just, it's just too regular that kind of thing happens and it breaks down and it just causes frustration. And you could hear them kind of moaning, big letdown all around the stadium. And uh, Osam Hassan, I think, is trying to... You know, make the point too, or reinforce it. Zalajan. Zalaham. Shown enough to suggest they could certainly get themselves a goal back, Jordan, and should have done, of course, with that early high out chance. It's Nasser. Now Bashir. That's overplayed to Hayal again. Well, he thought they'd got one back, the King, didn't he? King did. Abdullah, the second of Jordan. He's raised this match with his presence. It just shows how important it is for Jordan. I don't think it's going to ultimately end with qualification for the World Cup unless something drastic takes place. They're involved in two qualifying tournaments at the moment. The Asian qualifiers for the Asian Cup 2015 taking place. They're second in that group. Here's Cavani. It's got to it first, Cavani, Suarez is in the middle. It's pulled back to Lodiero. Three for Uruguay. And that really is a place in Brazil, surely done and dusted now for the South Americans. Cavani kept his head brilliantly. And Nicolas Lodiero finishes the tie-off, surely now. Jordan nil, Uruguay three. Well, it's extraordinary. Jordan had made all the changes and trying to get back into the game. Tabaras was happy with what he's got and probably would have liked a third just to, to give them extra breathing space. And um, and again, they've, they've just capitalised on, on weak Jordanian play. It was too easy for Cavani to get into the space. I think he did well to stay on his feet um, here because under the goalkeeper's challenge, he could have used it to maybe go to ground. In pulling it back, I think he's looking for Suarez. Gets the bonus of finding Lodiero. And he might have knocked it into the ground first, but it sat up enough. Might have even come off his other foot. And it just sat up enough to avoid everybody on that line. And, and now, for me, there's no way back for Jordan. I think Uruguay will make it to Brazil. Yeah, it's certainly looking that way. And Christian Stuani has been replaced by... Alvaro Pereira. And Gaston Ramirez is on now, a bonus for Southampton supporters. Well, he's been struggling at Saints this season, despite their good start to the campaign. He's featured just five times, not started a game. Seems to have fallen out of favour there with... Pochettino, which is something of a surprise given how much he cost them, a £12 million signing from Bologna. And you can see that they're all practically celebrating already down there on the Uruguayan branch. Yeah, I mean, you can understand why. To, to come here, um, they, they would have had hopes of coming here to win, don't get me wrong, Uruguay, because I think they, they know they're the superior outfit. But um, to be in this position now with um, with the time they've got remaining to maybe add a fourth, it's it's it's, it's perfect. Certainly the cue for Oscar Tabarez to make his changes at third goal. Here's Suarez. It's off the head of Rodriguez. The way by Nassar. Pereira. Cavani with the dummy. Alaham. Here is Ramirez. Pereira.
Yeah, whether they can muster something now, Jordan at the other end, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, they will reflect, and certainly Hassan Hassan will reflect on that missed high L chance. And, and it could have been a game changer. You know, it could have made life a lot harder for Uruguay and, and given Jordan Spirits um, a massive lift at, at the time of that opportunity. It's Godi. Pereira. Still 18 minutes to go here. Still time for Uruguay to make things a whole lot worse for the West Asian outfit. It's Godin. Al Bashir. Al Majan. Bawab. Hayao. There's no need to say anything now, is there? Oh, you just have a chuckle. Al Bashir. Al Majed. Alaham. Al Nassar. Alaham again. He's gone for goal. It was by Lugano. It's a corner. Well, they've been game, Jordan. You, you, they certainly can't be accused for a lack of effort. No, I think that's been the case all the way through. There is an honesty about them. They, they give it everything they've got. They're full of running, full of willing. But you have to back it up with um, with, with a good level of what you're doing. And, you know, just, just sheer enthusiasm is not going to do the trick for you. Nassar to take the corner, then. Again, Aravalo with the header away. Uh, Jordan haven't helped themselves on set pieces on a few occasions. You know, they're not beating the first man. Back out. It's a long trip to Montevideo now next week for Jordan. Attention will already shift to the, the Asian Cup qualifiers. Three games left in that tournament to book qualification. That's a corner. It's looking like just the four from Asia for World Cup 2014. Japan, Australia, Iran and South Korea are all through. It's a better delivery. Gano won the header, though. Pereira's header away. Akel. Khaled. Wins the free kick. Yeah, th this, was, um, this was a block. Stood in his way, Caceres. Although he, he did run into him a, a little bit. It's taken short. Made in by Akel. Almost fell to Katab. There was a, a crucial touch on that. Now Alaham. It's another corner. It's good defending by Goodine, stayed on his feet. Just kept his eye on the ball and, and just ignore the movement from Alaham, who's about to take the corner again now. Again, it goes short. Get it in the box. Still, it's not gone in. Almajan. Era chasing around. Alaham again. Almajan. This is how to overcomplicate a corner, isn't it? Alaham. Finally, it goes in. It's found its way through, but gathered by Silva, and that seemed a bit pointless from Jordan. Yeah, Uruguay a little indecisive on that, but yeah, after all that, it was just too low again, and there was a little touch from Bauab, but um, but no real danger for for Uruguay. I, I just cannot believe you three 0 down. Just get the ball in the box and, and and give the big fellas a chance to compete, or you might get a lucky break from it. Bowab, he's gone for goal. Just sums it up, really, for Jordan. Well, you can just feel the f deflation yeah. all around the whole stadium. 
It's um, from the wonderful fervour pre-match and in the early part of proceedings, it's it's really um, plummeted now, the atmosphere. It's um, I think the belief has gone out of it. Even the arrival of the King boosted the atmosphere a bit, didn't it? It did. Pereira beaten to that. Adnan. But the, the, the first person I heard use the expression was last season when Alan Pardew used it after a game. And I think Uruguay have done similarly in that they seem to have allowed the victory to come to them. Mm. You know, they've not really kind of forced the issue at all. It just they've just taken their chances when 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 um, when jo Jordan have presented them to them, and, um, and 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 that's proven really decisive. There's Pereira, it's fallen kindly here to Rodriguez. Four 0 for Uruguay, and this is turning into a rather comfortable afternoon for the South Americans. The harsh reality has hit home for Jordan. But they are a long, long, long way away from realising the dream of a place in the World Cup finals when faced with such quality. 4 0. Yeah, we've just been talking about the fact that um, the belief has, has gone out of the stadium, and I think that's carried um, onto the pitch too because I think the, the Jordanian players are, are now you know, pretty demoralised. and. And, and they're badly caught out again here. I mean, just look at the fact that they're all ball watching, leave Christian Rodriguez all on his own, and he had time to just take it on the chest and set himself up, and, and he's drilled it really strongly low um, to give the goalkeeper no chance. And I mean, who would have thought it? Four goal scorers, and neither Suarez or Cavani are, it's on, amazing, the, are on the score sheet. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You do it. You'd have got good odds on that, wouldn't you? Not necessarily the 4-0, but the fact that neither of those two would score. Yeah, there's, there's still time, there's still time. There's Diego Forlan on the bench, by the way. <laughs> Remarkable amount of attacking talent available to the Uruguayans. Might be 34 now, Forlan, but he's, he's some striker, isn't he? Joint top scorer, of course, and the golden ball winner at the last World Cup, Diego Forlan. Another short corner from Jordan. Now Alaham. Alaham again. Goes for goal. No problem for Martin Silva. And I think that's just another sign of frustration, Wayne. When you see the kind of efforts from range like that, I think they know, Jordan, that they're not good enough to be able to kind of play incisively through uh, that Uruguayan defence. So they're resorting now to longer range. And again, there's no real confidence or conviction in what they're trying to deliver. It's interesting seeing the stands emptying out now. Such disappointments. Of course, on paper and logically, if you're knowledgeable football supporter, which well, the Jordanians are. They came into this game realistically, probably knowing that they were going to get beaten. But there's always hope. Yeah. And, um, Luis Suarez, he's, he's done his bit. You know, he had a very good early chance in the game that didn't quite work out for him, but, but he's done his fair share of work, as you can see, the appreciation from the travelling support as well. We're talking about Diego Forlan is on the last 10 minutes. Suarez 39 international goals, which is a record for Uruguay. Forlan 36. But just to finish off the, the point I was making that by kickoff, I think the Jordanian supporters had talked themselves into the fact they were going to win this. Yeah. That, that, that was the feeling around the stadium, you know, that, that they were really up for it. I guess once they all pile in together and that kind of fervour just increases more and more and they start thinking, you know, maybe we, we got a chance here. Look, we, we knew coming into it that the superior team were, were arriving here from South America and it's, it's proven very much to be the case again. Lots, lots of willing from the home side, but, but the, um, the cunning and the craft has been there from, from Uruguay. Cup playoffs haven't been good to Hossam Hassan. Here's Hayao for Jordan. His beloved.
beloved Egyptian team were thrashed 6-1 by Ghana in the first leg of the African playoffs. And despite seeing off Uzbekistan in their first playoff, they've been well and truly put to the sword here by Uruguay. 4-0 with eight and a half minutes still to go. And the second leg. Aravalo. Now Pereira. Exchange of passes with the scorer Rodriguez. His forelap. Played behind Alvaro Pereira. Now Caceres. Pereira again. Now Caceres. Now Pereira taking on Adna. For Uruguay. Yeah, I think Adnan was hoped to play that off Alvaro Pereira and maybe get the decision his way. Ramirez. It's a clumsy challenge from Nassar on Christian Rodriguez. Scored in that 3 2 win against Argentina. That was a massive victory for Uruguay. Why do they call him the Onion? That's, that's what I know. He's, he's nicknamed the Onion Rodriguez, and I don't, I don't know. No, you've I'm got me there. I must have. <laughs> El, El Chabelo or something like that, they call him. It's Caceres. It's Pereira. Rodriguez. But I think it, it's not just down to ability, Wayne. I think we, we forget as well that Uruguay semi finalists in 2010 South Africa. Oh, given away horribly there by Qatar to Cavani, who blazes it over the top. And talk about being let out of jail there, Qatar. Goodness me, if there's one player you don't want to do that to. Well, guess what's just landed in somebody's garden? <laughs> I mean, it was that kind of effort from Cavani, and he thought he was just going to see that rocket into the top corner. You know, and again, it's a bad mistake from Jordan to provide this, but that's about as bad as you'll find. It's twice the height of the goal, then. How much you say he cost again? <laughs> just, the, just the 64 million euros. <laughs> Here's Ramirez. Caceres to Cavani. Ramirez. It's a rarity any Uruguayan game that Cavani or Suarez don't score it. But in a game that they're winning 4-0, it is quite extraordinary. That's from both sides down now. Yeah. Here's White. Gano and Bowab. Suarez will hate that, won't he, being substituted without scoring as well. Yeah, but Brendan Rodgers will, will love it because he looks as if he's he survived intact. There are no knocks, no injuries. Everything is OK for him to return to Liverpool in, uh, in the form he left. Two goals at the weekend in the 4-0 win against Fulham. Garnet. Too much on that for Gaston Ramirez. Yeah, but I was saying to you before about, you know, Oscar Tabara's kind of led them to the semi-finals in 2010 South Africa, and, and Uruguay would have been pretty much on their doorstep in Brazil. You know, they, they never have forgiven themselves if, if they failed to qualify. Yes, they made hard work of it in, in South America, probably should have should have finished a place higher at least, but um, but they seem to have uh, rescued things now. There's Bauab. Good ball from Bauer, but it was into Hayal again. And that's terrific defending from Lugano. I think they've played Hayal particularly well. I think he's found it really, really tough. Never mind his antics, but I think Lugano and um, Diego Godin have been, been very strong. And I think that's been the difference as well. They've been organised Uruguay. You could see the communication on all the set pieces, the way they're telling, who have you got? I've got him. You know, they really have been alert and they've attacked the ball. That's been the difference. Jordan have looked a bit static. Sar intercepting. Now Halam. Now Nassar. Halam again. For 
very poised with his whistle. He didn't give the free kick. Rodriguez, Alvaro Pereira, break on again here for Uruguay with Cavani. Adnan across. He did well to hold up Cavani. Almagen. I think Adnan's been one of Jordan's better players because, you know, in an attacking position earlier on, he was he had, he had a shot at goal, he got a great cross in for Hayel. Um, and he's looked OK since he's gone to right back, too. He's certainly shown some versatility, hasn't he, in terms of the positions he's played. It's Rodriguez. Now Forlan. Kept into the centre by Forlan. Oh, a smidgen higher. And you could see Cavani's um, angst on the far side that he knew that fraction higher and he was in. Almagen. It's one of modern football's great mysteries, really, how Diego Forlan didn't produce at Old Trafford. It's been sensational everywhere else he's been. It's a clumsy play all round, and Forlan has given away the free kick. The record goal scorer, but he is the record caps holder with 105. Diego Forlan. Alaham. Bauab helps it on. Cleared away by Pereira. The interesting thing about Diego Forlan, he, he's never played senior club football in Uruguay. Bashir. A high out. You, know, you talk about his, his stint at Manchester United, Wayne, as well. Um, Manchester United would have, been, would have been the biggest club he's played for, yeah? You just wonder, is it a psychological thing, then? Here's Bauab. Alaham, Bauab, he did really well, Bauab. He was battling away, but ultimately it's easily gathered by Martin Silva. But shown great endeavour, Bauab, since coming on. Well done, Jordan. At least they've, they've kept going. That's a great flick from Cavani. And Ramirez. And the ball on to Forlan, who goes for goal, and... Goodness me. Now he had made an awful mess of that for a second. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the pitch is firm, the surface is, is, um, is quite hard. So he wasn't taking any chances, the goalkeeper. And at the other end, Martin Silva did well. And that's why he decided to help it on its way. He might have been able to get more on that. Shatnawi. Pereira. Played in again by Aravalo. Forlan has kept it in. Cross in towards Cavani, headed behind for another corner. It's our man Adnan again. Just to go back to Forlan, he did have a spell at Inter, of course, in Italy, so... Yeah. I would still place Manchester United bigger than Inter. Comes the cross, header down by Rodriguez, gets it back again. Goes for goal, beaten away by Shatnawi, still it's not clear. And it's another corner for Uruguay, who are searching out a fifth goal. Yeah, goalkeeper's done well, got a good, good firm hand on that one, and, and Adnan did the rest on the follow-up. But it, it's just a case now of Uruguay just kind of adding, adding another. That's a decent touch, and... Adnan in the way as Alvaro Pereira tried to pull it back. You realise we're going to get lots of emails and tweets now from Inter fans, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Set the cat amongst the pigeons yeah. there. <laughs> Here's Caceres. Oh, that's a high challenge right on the edge of the penalty area. Crazy challenge from Adnan. It's a free kick well within Cavani or Forlan range. Four minutes to be added on. It's almost cruel, isn't it, to add on the four minutes here for Jordan. Hasn't convinced really in goal, has it, Chatnawi? No. That's, that's very high. That's extreme. For Jordan. Gaston Ramirez perhaps fancies this. Cavani, though, have seniority, and he goes for goal and finds it brilliantly. And there is your 64 million euros. 
Edison Cavani makes it Jordan nil, Uruguay five. They left it late, Jim, but one of them is finally on the score sheet now. Dear, oh dear, what a strike this is. I mean, I think he saved the best till last, Edinson Cavani. This is an absolute screamer. And while we were questioning, you know, the goalkeeper, now he can do nothing about that. I think it has been a problem area for Jordan. The man who's missing, Amar Shafi, um, this evening, I think had his troubles along the way too, but I think you need about four goalkeepers um, guarding that to, to try and keep this out. I mean, this is an absolute rocket from Edinson Cavani. Look at the bend on the that's, ball, it's sensational. That's as good as it comes, it really is, and, and very much worth the wait. Uh, Uruguay have absolutely coasted it. I didn't think it was the same guy that blazed over just moments earlier. <laughs> Sensational from Edinson Cavani. Two minutes into stoppage time, and this really is heartbreaking for Jordan. 5-0 with a trip to Montevideo to come. And what will be a fervent atmosphere inside the Estadio Centenario. Well, they don't have to wait now, the Uruguayan faithful, do they? They could just go and start the celebrations, having made it to, to Brazil, and, and, and look forward to the World Cup. Hayao still battling away. It's Caceres. I think when Seth Blatter talks about getting rid of these playoffs, I think this is the kind of thing yeah. that he's trying to avoid. Yeah. Teams playing off where one is just so much better than the other. Zalaham certainly had their, their moment in the spotlight, the victory over Uzbekistan on penalties. It was a, a sensational couple of games. Put them a step closer, but like Bahrain in the last two World Cups, Jordan have fallen short. Now Majan. And there is the final whistle. There's still 90 minutes to go in this match, but I think it's fair to say that Uruguay can celebrate becoming the fifth South American team to qualify for Brazil 2014. The country where they won the second of their two World Cups back in 1950. Oscar Tavares is guiding the South Americans back to the promised land of Brazil. Tough to take for Hossam Hassan and for Jordan, who have had a terrific qualifying campaign just to reach this stage of the competition. But this team just had too much for them. Pereira, Stuani, Ladero, Rodriguez, and then to Capital Cavani. Jordan nil, Uruguay five. Well done and dusted is all we need to say, really, Jim, isn't it? Ahead of the second leg. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we were hoping that it wouldn't be this predictable. There was always the likelihood that Uruguay would grab a hold of it and be too strong for Jordan. It turned out to be the case. But I think if Jordan managed to get the first goal, it could have given them more hope and it could have changed how this game may have gone. But, um, but Uruguay full value for it. They're just basically too good. They know they're there. You can tell by these celebrations, they realise it's job done. They are going to Brazil. And it's going to be a tough, tough second leg from Jordan. It will just be party time at the Centenario in Montevideo next week.